Hello, this is the second of our latest round of YouTube services. There are positive signs that the vaccine rollout is going well, so hopefully it won't be too long before we're able to meet again in person, even though it will still, I think, be a little restricted. I'm looking forward to seeing people smile again without their masks. I think we're getting used to learning how to smile with our eyes. In the meantime, we can be grateful and are grateful for the technologies which allow us to stay in contact with each other. And it is good that we're able to continue worshipping God during the storm. We've learnt that church does not depend on a building, and that's a very good lesson. We're still in the season of Epiphany when we focus on Christ as the light of the world. Today we hear of Jesus proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of God in Galilee. All praise be yours, my Lord, through all that you have made. And first, my Lord, brother, son, who brings the day. How beautiful is he, how radiant in all his splendor. Of you, most high, he bears the likeness. And praise be yours, my Lord, through sister moon and stars. In the heaven you have made them, bright and precious and fair. Or praise be yours, my Lord, through brothers wind and air. Or praise be yours, my Lord, through sister water, so useful, lowly, precious and pure. Or praise be yours, my Lord, through brother fire through whom you brighten up the night. Or oh, praise be yours, my Lord, through Sister Earth, our mother, who feeds us and produces various fruits with coloured flowers and herbs. Praise and bless, my Lord, and give him thanks and serve him with great humility. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to share some time with you. Thank you for our life together in the great city in which we are privileged to live. Thank you for the richness of humanity, our reaching across apparent divides to find each other and work together to build new communities of hope. Thank you for the community of love into which you call us. Thank you for not rejecting us because of our limitations but joining our strength with those of others to be the beloved community committed to building a new way of being in our world. Be patient with us, Lord, as we too easily succumb to despair or are overwhelmed by feelings of powerlessness. Lift us up. Strengthen us through the message of your gospel. Help us to hear again the good news you bring us. Be with us as we focus on you. Worship you for your great power in creation. Honour you for your forgiving, compassionate way of being. And bless you for the love and hope you bring us. The reading this morning is Mark 1, uh, 14 to 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishers. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish with, for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. 
as they went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left the father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Fish are in the news. For some reason, they became the centre of the negotiations for the Brexit deal without a happy outcome. Fish have been left unsold for lack of the proper paperwork. What one politician told us that the fish in British waters would be so much happier now that they're British. Personally, I doubt that the average cod or haddock could care less. In a way, it's ex quite extraordinary how much control we humans have over fish. We can put them in tanks and watch them swim around. We can make little pretend flies to catch their attention and then hook them, drag them in and cook them for tea. Or we can fish the sea so much that the ocean's ecology is put out of balance. There is something quite comforting about Jesus associating with four fishes. First there's Andrew and Peter and then James and John. We can read into that text that James and John were the better off. Theirs was a family business. They had a boat and some hired men. Andrew and Peter were casting their nets from the shore. They would be weighted down and then would pull in the smaller fish. James and John could drag their nets from the boat in the middle of the lake and draw in a healthier quota. Jesus was with John the Baptist in the south, but John had been arrested. The Gospels already telling us of the threats and dangers surrounding the mission of Jesus. He comes to Galilee, a peripheral, more multicultural part of the land of Israel. It does not seem that the fishers were part of the desperately poor, but neither would they be rich. Taxation on any business was oppressive. In telling the story, Mark has told us that Jesus has not come to escape the fate which had awaited John. Rather, he came to make a proclamation, a statement of intent, an enunciation of a new reality, good news, the gospel. The term good news suggests a messenger coming from the battle to tell a ruler that the victory was theirs. Do you remember the verse from Isaiah? How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Jesus is the messenger of peace and salvation and the reign of God. The time has come, he says. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe. That's not so easy to hear. These days we're not predicting anything good. We're more likely to be fearful of the future than eager for it. Have you thought that COVID is the beginning of the apocalyptic future that disaster movies and environmentalist campaigners have been warning us about? Maybe this is just a curtain opener for a long series of disasters, including the depletion of fish in the North Sea, whatever nationality they happen to be. This week, Pope Francis's new scientific advisor said just that. COVID is a wake-up call for politicians the world over to act. And he also said that for many, the impact of environmental degradation is already being felt through drought, flood, wildfires, deforestation, soil erosion. Apocalypse now. It's not difficult, as we are experiencing storm and plague in the UK to feel that we are doomed, all doomed. We're doomed. <laughs> Don't be quiet, traitor. We're entombed, entombed. But Jesus arrives in Galilee with good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. Something new is going to happen. The world is about to change. Things will never be the same again. The battle may be raging, but the war is won. Repent, turn around. And that's the message which the prophets repeatedly said, turn back, turn around, return to your God and believe. That's it. That's the gospel. Repent and believe. 
you would imagine that after as bold and provocative a statement as that, something spectacular would happen. You would imagine at least a thunderbolt or two. But instead, Jesus goes for a walk on the beach. And this is where it begins with four fishes. Follow me. Come on an adventure, a mission. Live life with a purpose. Be fishers of people. Let me hypnotise you. Erase from your minds any thoughts you might have about missionaries and evangelists, Bible bashers or religious bores. Jesus was recalling some texts from the Hebrew Bible. Jeremiah wrote, I am now sending for many fishermen, says the Lord, and they shall catch them. And Amos wrote, the time is surely coming upon you when they shall take you away with hooks, even the last of you with fish hooks. Hooking fish was bad news, not good. Andrew, Peter, James, John, you and me are not here be being called to drag people into church, willingly or not. Rather, they and we are being asked to root out those who have failed the people. It's a call to be prophetic. It's a call to live the new way and to acknowledge that the old way is still in need of challenge. I believe that these apocalyptic times, these are apocalyptic times, but not in the sense that the disaster movies or doom-laden environmentalists would have us think. The word apocalypse means an unveiling, a revelation. It's an exposure of meaning within events. Our times tell us that now is the time to repent and believe and to see God's kingdom at work. It is understandable if we paint every disaster as a sign of the end of humanity, an existential crisis truly dangerous and threatening. We can immerse ourselves in a deep pessimism, a state of absolute powerlessness. All we can do is hope to survive even if we doubt that the world will be worth having if we go on like this. We whiplash between protest, which often seems futile, small gestures, which feel important but inadequate, and withdrawal into our own neat little shells, waiting for the inevitable. The apocalypse, the revelation, is not the destruction of the earth, but a man standing on the shore asking a few fishes, to fish for people. It is the everyday, the ordinary, the accessibility of those four workers that make the story of the beginning of the kingdom of God on earth, as in heaven, so extraordinary and so accessible. It could have been you or me. Well, it is you and me. We cannot put the genie back in the bottle. We cannot pretend that we do not know about climate change. We cannot pretend that we have not seen the inequalities which underlie in our country's existential crisis of values, or that we are not living in dangerous times. We need to repent of the hubris that says we are in control of our own destiny. We need to believe enough to become caretakers. When I had a proper job, I figured out that the most important person in the building was the caretaker. The caretaker knew what was going on, they knew who made mischief when no one was looking. They knew who left a mess and who always put the chairs back after a meeting. And they also cared about the people and the place. We put a lot of trust in caretakers to look after our buildings, especially when no one else is there. We need them to fix things, put things right. We need to be caretakers. In the past month, we have had to think about care workers and those who day by day care in unspectacular but important ways, rather like those first disciples doing their job, taking care of their nets. If we believe, then we take care. And more than that, we dream. Within the nightmare of our times, we dream of the alternative. And while some continue to wreak destruction, others have spectacular intelligent, visionary new ideas, renewable energy, re reordering of the economic relationships in society. 
There is something we are not getting. There is a way out of our crisis. We are being given the glorious opportunity to make something out of the nothing we have been given. For the multiple and interconnecting crises of our time bring us together with people who are experiencing the world as we do. The violence of the prevailing order must give way to something new, to something decent. There is no political, economic, scientific way forward without a return to the moral and religious convictions of former days. The apocalypse is unveiling the re-emergence of decency, crossing of boundaries between people and the extension of what Martin Luther King called the beloved community. Disastrous things are happening to our world, but fatalism is not the answer. Just take a trip to that Galilean beach. The world was about to give birth to a new age. God's way of compassion and forgiveness was about to explode on the world. And it began with four guys going about their everyday business. And soon they joined with others. The poor, the overlooked, the disgraced, the thoughtful, the discontented intellectuals, the intuitively rebellious, the naturally optimistic, and together they became a beloved community. To follow Jesus is to belong to those who stick their fish hooks in the forces which keep people down, which are destroying our world depleting the oceans of fish, distributing vaccines inequitably. It is to join forces with the ordinary people who in their small ways can make a difference, who take care. We should not see ourselves as those who are living in the end times of humanity, but as those who are living the birth pangs of the new age. To hear the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand is indeed to be given hope in dark times. To repent and believe is to be given the recipe for moving out of the crisis and into a future which is not just a replication of a failed past. And yes, to take care of the fish. Hello, hope you're well. My name is Ogo Ajala, and it is always a pleasure to join you at Union Chapel uh, today I'm going to be singing a song by Gregory Porter and I believe it's a song that talks about the kingdom of God and, and what Jesus did when he came. I added a bit of my spin on it. I hope you like it. God appeared and defied the rules of monarchy. Defied the thoughts of who a king from above is. 
He established his kingdom with his life and made it a place where anyone, everyone is welcome. In his divine wisdom, everyone is the same in the vine. Hey, no high, no low, just ranches, citizens, royals. Hey, live life in the kingdom Christ prepared. This is the good news Jesus declared. Yeah. pray together. We join each other and God in the fellowship of prayer. We pray for the world in which we are set. We give thanks for creation, for the gift of life itself. We pray that the immediacies of our necessities do not cloud our ability to see, hear, smell, appreciate and love the life we have been given. The goodness of you, our beneficent creator. We pray for all who are facing the consequences of environmental degradation, for people facing storms, floods, fires, the depletion of their livelihood, for animals, fish, insects, and all those species within the ecology upon which all life is dependent, for fishes and all who protect the rich and wonderful life of the oceans and rivers, for all who lack clean water, we pray for those tackling the pandemic. Especially we pray for the equitable distribution of vaccine to ensure that receipt of this gift of science to humanity is available regardless of wealth or power. And we continue to pray for those who are ill or bereaved. We pray for all caretakers, those who care for our elders, those who care for the spaces in which we live those who keep buildings clean and good for us to work, relax and enjoy. For those who care for our environment, gardeners, farmers, environmentalists, campaigners. We pray for the new administration in the United States, that they may be guided by moral conviction and care for all its citizens. We pray that they will also be able to exercise leadership guided by a desire to transform the world order from its current destructiveness and inequity. We pray for those who are creating the destruction through the theft of resources, the unnecessary amassing of wealth, corruption and violence. We pray for their repentance 
that they may become accountable to the court of moral justice and righteousness. We pray that we too will be able to repent of our complicity to the destruction of the world through our ignorance, through our lack of vision and fatalism. We come to you because we trust you to come to us, as you have so often before, with that heartfelt compassion shown in the precious gift of your Son who calls us today into the beloved community. Lord, we repent and we believe. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Join and celebrate the Feast of Life. Let us bathe in turquoise waters free as fish are. Let our bodies swim with the aquatic currents in saline refreshment, delighting our senses. Let us unify and pulse with the heartbeat of nature. Hear the choir of birds chanting harmoniously, melodies of earth and love's supreme frequency. Feel, feel your spirit joining the dance of life. Oh, you child of humankind, wake up to bliss. See the heaven around you and within you. Free the taciturn fire of your blood and let it burn. Burn, burn with the power of love and ecstasy. See the summit of your life upon the mountains white. Straighten your spine, rise and feel your wings, you mysterious soul, majestic bird of earth. Rise, rise and in zenith take your flight. Dream. Dream your reality, feel its grandeur, feel how the two are merging as twins, suffused in energy divine, fountain of eternity. Soar, soar and see what enchantment nature is. Watch the mountains with its cascades and caverns, fascinating stalactites and stalagmites, fields of green and forests fresh with oxygen, vales and dales, lawn and lea, meadows and pastures, fields of corn, Flowers, vine, barley and wheat, rain and rainbows, lake, rivulets and rivers, orchards of fruit nourishing with vital succulents, luxuriant, bountiful floral gardens and fauna, minerals, diamonds and gold and bounded abundance, land and archipelagos, moon and constellation, child of the elements, body of clay, blood of fire, spirit of air, mind of water, let us fill our chalices with red wine and mirth and feast with life. Thank you as always for sharing with us over the airwaves. I hope you are staying safe and staying well. As usual, we'll have our Bible study on Tuesday evening at seven o'clock. Please uh, send me an email uh, and I will let you have the link um, and hope to see you there. We close with a blessing. For your goodness and generosity in giving us all we need, help us to praise you, O oh God. In every circumstance of life, in good times and bad, help us to trust you, O oh God. In love and faithfulness, with all that we have and all that we are, help us to serve you, O oh God. As we speak or write or listen to those nearby or far away, help us to share your love, O oh God. In our plans and work for ourselves and for others, Help us to glorify you, O God. 
in every thought and word and deed by the power of your Holy Spirit. This week, may we live for you, O God. To God the Father who loved us and made us accepted in the Beloved. To God the Son who loved us and loosed us from our sins by his own blood. To God the Holy Spirit who spreads the love of God abroad in our hearts. To the one true God be all love and all glory for time and for eternity. Amen. Sing, sing, so there is a bar.